Look, you've got some cool list. Yeah, no, fucking okay. Tarzan is, is where I need to And he lost it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Beacon House Podcast, recorded live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that's how I got free gin. Just dressing up like a banana and starting a conga line gets you free gin no matter where you go. Well, and on that note, folks, uh, this is the Beacon House Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in again. My name is Spencer. <coughs> I'm Hunter. I'm Casey, and that's not that funny, Hunter. And we have a special guest with us we today, guys. We do have a special guest. Would you, would you like to introduce him? It is Keith Wallen. Keith Wallen from many bands. Many. Most currently Breaking Benjamin, but also notably... A legendary Knoxville band, Copper. And Adelita's Way. Yeah, it just keeps going. You've had a lot of cool stuff. I'm just, like a, I'm just like a penny, man. I just turn up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, thanks for having me, fellas. Hey, thank you for being here. It's an honor for me. Uh, my brother my brother introduced me to Adelita's Way, and I had to actually point out, I was like, is that Keith? And he goes, oh, my God, that is Keith. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, well, thank you for coming on very much. Uh, real guys, before we get into it, uh, we want to notify everybody here um, that this is the last week. When you guys hear this, it's going to be the last week that you can check to register for the local election. And uh, it's real simple to do. We've got a couple of links you can go to here. We've got a phone number for the Knox County Election Commission. If you're, if you're not registered to vote or if you're not sure if you're registered, because sometimes if you move or you have a change of address, a lot of things can happen. And uh, I'm going to have Hunter read off the information you need to check to see if you're registered to vote and go for it. All right. Uh, the two things you can do, go to knoxcounty.org. You'll click on the department link, go to Election Commission. There will be a form that you can fill out. Or you can call the Election Commission. The phone number is 865-215-2480. So there you have it. Make sure you register. Yeah. Can we get on with the fun now? Absolutely. Go ahead. Why don't you All right. take us to Fun Town there? <laughs> fun Town? Oh, my goodness. That sounds... That, start that's... a conga line there. Oh, I give me a banana suit and gin and tonic, and I'll definitely start a <laughs> what conga a lot line. Of people, what a lot of people don't know is the thing, <coughs> the thing he said is actually true. That yes. was 100% true. You've been known to do that. Yes. That is code name Base Banana, if I, if I remember correctly. Code name. Mm-hmm. Code name. How, how did that get started? How did that manifest, the the the, ba- the it was the name, the costume, the whole shebang. It was DJ Slink and Darla pulled me up on stage, and they're like, "You go ham every weekend. Like every time I look down in the, and it's you and Spencer, and you're just going nuts." <laughs> and they're like, "If we give you a banana outfit with giant cartoon gloves, we can't pay you, but will you do it?" And I said, "Well, I can't be here every Saturday." And they're like, "That's fine." Just when you do show up, could you bring the costume with you, put the gloves on, and go nuts? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, you can get up on stage and dance with the girls. Security guards won't bring you down. And I was like, all right. And they're like, all right, so we can't That's pay amazing. you. But they said. That, <laughs> That's amazing. I know. Incredible. People would oh, pay f- to do that. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it, it well, got and, them. And I thought funny, <clears throat> his job sort of mutated later into when they knew they could trust him and he was like super reliable. Yeah. And he would be there every week, and he was on point. But then they gave him the job of sort of like uh, pushing went, drunk girls off stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when like undesirables would the climb banana up on stage. enforcer. Yeah, yeah, they would get rocketed off and you stage gotta, by this giant banana. And you got to understand the banana suit on the top and bottom. There wasn't anything there; it was just open. So if I didn't, I had to stuff it with paper towels to give it form. <laughs> and so really, when I'm pushing chicks off stage, being like, "Get out of here, you drunk." It looked like like the bottom part was like slapping them in the legs, and they're like, "What is? What's going on?" I was like, "No, that's it, not." It looked um, like a big yellow dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just say what it is. Well, I mean, girls would turn around, and they'd be like, oh and like grab God. it and shake it, and I'm like, "Stop! The paper towels are gonna fall out. Quit!" <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, strange, strange times. I know it was strange. <laughs> but you, did, you, you owned that. I had my own <clears> theme song. Not, not probably, probably not, probably a little different for, from like your experiences being on stage, but. Uh, but no, it's about no, it's the same. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember the time Stam iced me while I was in the banana outfit, and I just owned it. Oh, I yeah. cracked it open. I did the t- Tim Tebow, you know. That was back when it was that 
the trend of giving your friend a smeared off ice and you had to drink it right there. And it was awful. Yeah. But it I owned called, it. It was called Bros Getting Iced. That was the YouTube video. I, it. I hated it. Yeah, it was pretty rough. They would get them all hot. Like the guy would leave one in the mailbox all day and his buddy Ugh. would find it. Of course, he would be filming him from the bushes and the guy had to like, he knew he was being filmed and he just had to, it was like a code of honor. You had to drink Ugh. it even if it was like 80 degrees. or just, Oh God. Ugh. It's awful. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. But, uh, well, let's move past that a little bit and go. I know you guys have got a lot of questions for Keith. I'm going to wait because we go way back. We've got a lot. We've got <laughs> Actually, I can't wait to hear this. I kind of want to open up with you two have a, uh, a, a Phil Collins thing oh, going please. on. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I want to hear about this Phil Collins thing. Yeah. Um, well, you I mean, mean our boy Philly C? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your boy, Philly. Oh, my gosh. I actually have a question for you. Love it. All right. I have a question for you concerning Phil Collins. Oh, no. Um, and this, look, if, well, for starters, if Phil Collins is listening to this, which I know you're not. We'd love to have you on. <clears throat> Phil, please, <laughs> please come on, Phil. Um, and I don't mean this if there are other Phil Collins fans out there and not just people making fun of us. So <clears throat> shut up. Uh, I'm used you to noticed it. on my like, uh, – you know all the Phil Collins like album covers. Yeah. The old ones like Face Value, mm-hmm. No Jacket Required. Like there was like the, it was always this real tight shot of his face. And yeah. it was like either black or like a, a red light on it or whatever. <clears throat> and it was that way for a while. And you could tell these like iconic Phil Collins albums. And then recently I noticed on like iTunes or Spotify or just whatever, it's Phil Collins, but it's him like much older. Like they reshot all the album covers yeah. now. And you've got this like, 75 year old Phil Collins on and I wanted gross why they did that why did they reshoot it was it like a licensing thing or I don't know I mean <laughs> was it like a remastered version of the albums or No Jacket Required was remastered was it really yeah okay. Take Me Home I grew up listening to dad play that on cassette going to Pennsylvania oh well you've got some cool listening yeah no fucking Tarzan that's that's where I need to and he lost from, it so, so. <laughs> shut up Casey. there we go Tarzan <laughs> Those are some kick-ass sorry, songs. Sorry, get out sorry. of here. No, I, I, I can I can get down with that. But I just noticed that Phil Collins all of a sudden just looked weird online. Yeah. It was yeah. very bizarre. And I was kind of like... Uh, that time. Oh. That time's a real, it's a real bitch. <laughs> <laughs> time is a total bitch. Um, but no, no, we Keith and I are big Phil Collins fans. I don't know how did... Uh, I don't I don't know if we ever had a formative conversation about it. I think we just like... Like, yeah, you love Phil Collins too? Sweet. Yeah, high five. Then that was it, probably. Let's go get shirts made. <laughs> like, right now, it's pretty sweet. I got oh, my man. shirt on. If you guys got those, like, the, what was it? They, like, airbrush, airbrush t-shirts there with we go. Phil Collins on it. It's not going to happen. I, I, if anybody's listening and owns one of those kiosks, make us Phil Collins shirts, please. Have See, I love Genesis too, though, you know? And, oh, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, absolutely. what about Billy Joel? Like, it's I love in Billy the Joel. same area. Yeah. Have you ever seen the video of Billy's Red Rage? Where he was with a documentary crew. In Moscow, Holy or in shit. Russia, and yes. he flings a mic stand. <laughs> he he yeah. tips his whole piano. Yes. He's like, quit turning on the lights. Yes. It's Let great. me do my show. Wow. It's great. It's, it's so you good. just can't stop watching it. It's, over over. No. it's such a train wreck. No, and 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 uh, if he's listening, shout out to uh, uh, my boy Alex that was in the American Plague, you know, he, and he bolt cables and bolt electronics. He pointed out that one of the funniest things in that video is the keyboard player that's in the frame before you see Billy losing his mind. You've got this keyboard player. It's like he's playing a keytar, and Amazing. he's got, like, leg warmers, and, like, the guy, it's, I mean, he's, he's a, it's a job for him, you know, but he's really working it. And <coughs> right behind him, his boss is just losing his mind completely on this, like, cocaine-fueled, like, power, you know, it's just this mo- the, the most crazy part of Billy Joel's career. It happened right behind this guy that's just really trying to do his thing, you know? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, I think so. um, but no, I, and I remember uh, uh, Keith and I one time played a benefit together <clears throat> when a couple friends of ours were in a car accident. And I remember we got together to decide on some cover songs to do. And I'll never forget Keith. Like right out of the bat, he goes, I'm not afraid to do like three Phil Collins songs. We had like five songs. Right. <laughs> like, I'm not afraid for like, you know, three fifths of this to be Phil Collins. Yeah. And I'm not like, one, but yeah, like 12. And we kind of broke it. Like there was like a Genesis and... You know, then like Phil Collins or whatever, and that. But God, man, you did against the odds, and it was it was dope, dude. It was fun, man. That was really fun. And um, we did a King's X song. That's yeah. another big. Th- yeah, okay, I'll tell. Okay, I'll get my I'll get my Keith story out of the way. <clears throat> um, I remember when uh, when you had started playing around, and uh, I didn't know you yet, but I had heard about you because you guys were covering a King's X song. And I just couldn't believe that anybody locally was doing I thought I was the only guy, maybe uh, maybe me and Todd Etheridge, 
Shout out Todd Etheridge. If you're out there, I thought we were the only two guys that knew who King's X was. Like just, they just never got big, and they're this real like, prolific band. And they're like, yeah, there's a band locally here that's doing a King's X song. And I was like, what? Att- more like attempting to do a King's X song. No, probably. I heard <laughs> you guys were great. I, I, you know, it's so, it's so funny how, like, uh, you know, you try to think about stuff you've done in the past, and you're like, man, you know. We were we were pretty good back then. And then like I like discovered like some old tapes and old videos and stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, we suck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I sound like a little kid, and just it was just embarrassing. So it's all it's all relative to that stuff too, you know. Well, I thought you guys were dope, and, and I appreciate. I, that. I thought it was so cool that you you were into King's X, and I mean. Oh man, that was that was the best, and and like yeah. So Keith and I have been sort of kindred spirits for a long time. We had a lot of the same musical uh, tastes and things, and just like you know, man, I've just always been a big fan of like your kind of rock. And God, I know that's really general, you know, but um, I just feel like you're a guy that's never been afraid to just like really go for a hook and like big melody and like like song foundation kind of stuff, you know, like. Uh, I don't know, man. You've had a, just a, a way about songwriting for a long... I mean, you've written, like, a whole bunch of my favorite songs. Dude, I appreciate it, man. Like, by anybody. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like starting with, like, In Copper and then coming all the way up, like... Whole, and we're going to talk about Hello, Houston. Oh, my God. We're <laughs> so... It's, like, our number one song of the year, like, the three of oh, us. Wow, I, man. I honestly think allies in general, like, every song I was telling them, I was... Every single song, I was like, man, I could just pop this in the car and go and just listen mm-hmm. to every song on the way to work. And tell, talk about that. Talk, tell us about that record a little bit. There. First off, oh, my God, I don't even know what to say. That's so cool. Like, I love it, man. It's great. That's, I can't thank you guys enough uh, for checking it out. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty chill. It's kind of a chill thing. You know, I've always done this rock, rock stuff. I mean, and I love it. I love, I love uh, you know, playing in bands and just, like, you know, really – you know, heavy stuff. I love it. Uh, and I just, you know, my whole career has been that. So, and I just wanted to just change it up and, you know, plus, um, I just started kind of <clears throat> getting better at recording at the time. And, and, and really it was, it was the only thing I could record that sounded halfway decent was just like piano and vocals. And I was, <laughs> lots of people were like, how come you didn't, you know, how come there's no drums or anything? It's like, you know, and I'll, I'll I'll say something like, "Oh, you know, I just felt like the song didn't need it." But the reality is, I my drum sounded like shit. So, uh, <laughs> I just, you like you put it in there, you listen, you're like, "Nah, it's just move well, that yeah, out." Yeah, there, there's like versions where there had like there's like drum beats and stuff, and or little little you know, drum hits and stuff, and I'm just you know, it just didn't work. So I'm like, I'm just keep it simple and try to get the piano. You know, even the piano. Just doesn't sound like a real piano, but I kind of liked it. I kind of just, you know, put some delay on it and made it just sound kind of, you know, weird, like in a church somewhere. And yeah, I noticed that the whole thing had kind of a, an, and I hesitate to say this because it's such a polarizing label, but it had kind of an ambient yeah, vibe, totally. Uh, um, and these days, like <laughs> these days, everybody with a reverb pedal is like an ambient musician, but I don't mean it like that. Like it had a vibe to it. Yeah, and it's super cool. It was very cool. Uh, Man, it's it's rad. Go, I think you were about to say something. Oh, I was just going to say the, the songs don't need drums. I'm sure they wouldn't be hurt by it at all. But between your live performance at Open Chord and then the actual songs themselves, piano and vocals or guitar and vocals, um, it's not the normal rock that you do, but they lack nothing in the way of power. Oh, just that's awesome, fr- man. From a sonic perspective, and especially a written one, but just sonically speaking, um, they don't like they they'll knock your socks off but not melt your face off kind of thing so yeah. it's like what Casey was saying right yeah pop it into the car crank it up roll the windows down that's what I've been doing uh, since cool. we found out we had you on the show I was like well I've got to listen more so I went <laughs> back and started listening to everything and I made like new playlists on YouTube and it's all I listen to right now the oh, stuff is stuck awesome. in my head it's brilliant brilliant thank music. you totally yeah I, I, whenever I'm telling people about it I'm like. Uh, you know, because it is so just kind of, you know, more chill, I'm just like, you know, if you're ready to take a nap, just put on Allies. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, for like a relaxing Sunday, definitely. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. And where can people find that? Is it, there's their physical copies or is it just, just yeah. digital? Uh, there's no, well, I mean, I've seen physical copies and I think uh, you can get them on Amazon or Amazon something. It's okay. all tied in. To it, but uh, you know, it's all the, the regular places iTunes, you know, Spotify, all that stuff, Apple Music. 
so definitely if you if if you're listening to this and uh, I would say if you're listening to this and you are familiar with Breaking Benjamin if you're familiar with Copper even if you've not heard Allies you like you're you're missing out big that's a I mean as as far as we're talking about Keith Wallen I think that's a vital piece in the puzzle and you guys have got to go check it out like I heard that, I, man again I've listened to you for so long in so many bands and stuff and I just I can. <laughs> I can just hear that Keith thing. You know, it's hard to explain what it is, but you've got like a, <laughs> you've got a thing. I, and funny. I think it's, I think it's so, I know I'm super fangirl, like, but um, I, I mean, I get it. I think it. it's cute. Yeah, I bet, <laughs> I, I bet you do. Okay. Watch it. Okay, pal. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I think you're cute too. But no, like just knowing like our common influences and stuff. Like I just remember even like um, just being in the club when you guys were playing, I could just tell like you've got this like, You've got these things you do, and it's just rad. And um, it's kind of a signature vibe, I guess. But I hear that in Allies as well, too, man. And it's just, I don't know, it's rad. So That's you guys, cool, man. whoever's listening to this, check it out. <laughs> don't don't, don't pass on. Don't snooze on that one. Go check it out for sure. And I also want to cover, you did a, a, you did a cover of Black Hole Sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, and that is great. That is Wow, thank you. What it's like? Did you just was it just the Chris Cornell thing that made yeah. you want to do it? Yeah, I just uh, man, that just it really bummed me out. Yeah. Like it mm-hmm. really hit me hard because I just it was so unexpected. You know, um, you know sometimes you know you you see some of these artists you know they don't treat their bodies great and you know you you kind of you don't want to say you see it coming but you're just like oh man you know I hate that that happened but. You know, it's, it's 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 still a little bit kind of anticipated in a way, but um, with Chris Cornell, I just was like, man, I you know, I couldn't believe it, and and I just, well, I think he inspired a whole generation. Oh yeah, for I'm, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what 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 it says on his, you know, his his tombstone and everything is just like, you know, I, a, a artist for all time or something like that, you know, and it's so it's so true, like yeah. it rings so true, and and. Um, you know, so I just felt like that was like the one thing I could do to, I don't know, kind of, you know, show a tribute in a way, in my own little way. So, well, it, it, you yeah. definitely killed it for I sure. Appreciate it was awesome. Big time. Yeah. 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 But, and you could tell by the, the feedback on that too, just like the, the response it got. Oh, man, it was. Yeah. Rad. People were really, really cool. You know, obviously, uh, you know, I'd rather him still be around, you know, to be still making music and. You know, uh, you know, along with so many other artists that we've lost here recently, it's just man, it's such a bummer. I mean, David Bowie, oh, Scott Weiland, you know, yeah, Jesus, Chester, you know, it mm-hmm. sucks, oh, man. man. I know, I know, it, it's a lot, and I know a lot of people that have been wrecked by it, man. Like, yeah, um, um, it, the one I think the one that well, that I don't know that it's maybe not fair to say one affected me more. The one that really wrecked me the worst was Prince. Yeah, that was. <clears throat> It was awful. I think somewhere in my childhood, like I saw, I saw so much of that era of like Purple Rain when he was just like, it was just crazy. And then yeah. I continued to see him like, just turn into this iconic artist. And I think at some point, I thought the guy was probably immortal. Yeah, yeah. magic. Like, yeah, just pure magic. Yeah, yeah, after that Super Bowl thing where he was like, it rained, and he oh, was out yeah. there and like in high heels in the rain, and it was just like it was meant to happen, you know. Well, I watched a, I don't know if it was a documentary, but it was like a small little YouTube clip that you can find where they were asking him, they're like, it's going to rain, like, or do you want, and he goes, man, if you can make it rain harder, that'd be great. <laughs> and, uh, and he went out there in those heels and just went nuts. And I was like, <laughs> what a Prince thing to say. What a Prince thing to say. But yeah, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then it just kept happening after that. And um, the I remember, oh my gosh, like uh, Chester and then like mm-hmm. so many people I work with were just like, uh, it, it was you just see it like spreading out. Like I mean, it's crazy. I hate to see bad things happen to like you know. Yeah, and I also think when musicians pass, you can see it affect more people than like when actors and actresses or directors and things like that. Like it for some reason because I guess music speaks to you in a different way. It, you can see how it affects people more than others. That's interesting. I haven't really ever thought about that, but sure, sure. Or maybe maybe, maybe, maybe because are, you're you're seeing more of like an authentic. Part, like I guess if you if you follow a musician, you're following like uh, there's the songs they've written and the things yeah. they particularly have to say. I guess maybe if you're like a big fan of an actor, 
um, you're probably still it's probably still very striking to you, but they're portraying a difference. You want know to I mean? maybe there's yeah, not as you much fall honesty. In love with I don't the, know. A mask well, that they put on versus a musician. Right. You fall in love with. Who so they you are. feel like you literally lost a friend, like yeah. one of your favorite musicians. And a lot of people away. also say, you know, well, the, these songs changed my life, or these songs got mm-hmm. me out of a dark, uh, dark place. You never really hear about that, like, oh, this TV show pulled me out of a dark place, or yeah. this movie got me out of a, a real bad situation. You know, TVs and movies are really good to, like, turn your mind off, watch, and, you know, kind of forget stuff. But sure. music makes you feel and kind of, you know, face some, you know, things that you want to face. Well, it's like, you know, when Robin Williams passed away, mm-hmm. it, it was it was the same kind of shock, you know what I mean? And it's just, you know, not music, but, gosh, he had some amazing performances, and I think oh, yeah. people really connected with those yeah. characters. And Dead Poets Society was a big one for me. Yeah. And the world felt a little less funny. Oh, man. And, and, and it's, it's the same kind of thing where, like, man, you just, I just didn't see that coming at all, and it just, it was horrible. Yeah. You know, and it just goes to show you never know. You never know what, what kind of pain somebody has, you know, and I don't know. It's yeah, and that, that might be, like, you, you could probably speak, to, not, not that you're <laughs> Not that you're in pain yeah. or anything, but yeah, but talk to people. Yeah, like talk to people if you are in pain. I guess yes. you know. And I know that's kind of like, you know, people kind of. It's hard to talk about that kind of stuff. Sure. I, I think sometimes, sure. especially you know, they they don't want to feel like they're weak or they don't want to feel like they're, you know, just. I, I don't know. That's huge. No, I think that's huge. That's but, a, that's very good advice. Also, yeah. reach out. You know, someone Absolutely. even even if you don't think something's wrong. My my bandmate from. High school that uh, killed himself a few years ago. I, you know, that, that stuff you're probably not going to be able to really change just by reaching out. But I thought of texting him because it had been like a year since we talked. Sure. Two weeks before, and I was like, I mean, he was always a teddy bear of a dude, so he would have been cool. But I was like, I haven't talked to him in a year. Like, what am I going to say other than hey, what's up? And then yeah. two weeks later, happened. So you never know. So if like yeah. someone crosses your mind, reach out anyways. Like there is no next time. time. Yeah. You know, yeah. you never know what's going to happen. If like, if, if, if uh, I heard somebody say that about it, like if you, if there's a band you like or somebody coming through town and like, don't sit at home, you know, like don't sit it out, man. Like it could, it, oh, you yeah. never know that could be, this could be it. Yep. There, speaking of Copper's uh, reunion show. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, Gosh. don't speak of not sitting it out. Can we, can we please like, again, what a parlay that was. <laughs> I'm, I'm known for the smooth <laughs> transitions on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, so the Oscars, there was so much uh, bullshit in that laugh. <laughs> the smooth transitions. Well, it's that's because it is bullshit. I, yeah. Copper, go, however, is go not ahead. Bullshit. Smooth transitions. A, give us, give us the well, segue that was your right into one, that. Two in one uh, episode. Um, having seen you live for the first time at Open Chord, knocked my socks off, and Thank I was you. like, I, I don't give a fuck. You know, he's he's going to be back here again. I'm down. Um, my fiance sister showed up and she immediately I was like hey by the way they'll be here um in a couple weeks to do another show and she was like oh my god and starts texting everybody and we play cool. D&D online so we were like hey if you guys are gonna like have 10 bucks drop it and shit if down. you can get the D&D That's crowd cool. to show up like in full like they oh could, yeah they could LARP at absolutely the- LARPers, <laughs> LARPers welcome LARPers welcome Come on swords Big. in the background you of the could pull that show. off yeah. man that, I will that see would what I can one, do. That, that would be one <laughs> hell of a mosh pit. Oh That's my right. God. Can That's you right. bring the base banana suit? Uh, no, I threw it away. It got uh, a little too, oh, it got a little too ripe. Yeah. <laughs> it's beer stains. It got a little too ripe. Beer stains. Ripe. Like, ugh. But anyways, people um, spilling, too people spilled, ripe. People spilled drinks on me all the time. Like, people would come up to me and put their arm around me and, like, dump their whole drink over my shoulder. God and be like, bless. hey, man, my, my, my fiance's Don't over here. Don't talk your way out of this. You made a fruit joke. That was a you fruit, did. You did a was, fruit pun. Well done. You're welcome. So with the with the Copper Show, it's April sixth, right yes. at Open Chord. Yep, that's correct. Um, I what, think there are still some tickets available. I cannot imagine that that's going to be the case for much longer. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, go buy it now. Get in there quick. We want to hang out with you guys. So what brought that about though? Because you you are about to go on tour with. Breaking Benjamin, right? Like yes, soon. It's, yes, yes. Uh, we are gearing up for a pretty busy, busy summer here. Um, yeah, I just uh, I had a little window of opportunity, and um, they don't come too often, so I, I felt like I needed to kind of jump at the chance. You know, I posted a well. This friend of mine, he actually uh, he actually lives in Russia. He hit me up. Um, really cool dude. Um, and and it, oh, it just been super supportive of just like all my music and and the diff- various bands I've been in, and he was just like, "Yo, man, uh, happy anniversary for Copper 
15th anniversary for Fragile Falls. Oh, so you didn't I had no idea. Oh. I mean, I, I'd like to say, like, oh, yeah, I kept tabs. I was ready for this. I, it, I was Got like, what? Got on my phone. You know? Yeah, I was, yeah, it was so, like, out of the blue. And I just thought, wow, that's cool. So I posted that, uh, you know, picture the album cover on um, Instagram. And it just, I was like, wow, we should just do a show for the 15th anniversary. And it's like, let's just do it, you know? And so that's kind of how it came about, and I hit up the other guys, all the other guys that actually recorded on that album. So it's all those those same dudes, and we really we hadn't played together probably in about fifteen years. So it's been Jeez. since around that album came out since we all even wow. played. So crazy. Uh, we just had the first rehearsal this past weekend. How'd it go? And uh, day one was pretty good. Day two was so much better. Uh, day day one, I'm like uh, just you know sitting there like eh, eh, just like with the lyrics, you know, like you don't know the lyrics, so you just mumble a bunch of shit. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I, yeah, the next day it was just like, okay, so I'm ready. Quick. Let's do it. That's yeah, it's right. like we could we that's, could play a show now. So that's great. That's awesome. I actually think my first local band CD buy was Copper. Wow, I man. Went, I think I went to a Best Buy. Was it Fragile Fall? It was Fragile Fall. Oh, shit. And I went to Best Buy and was like, my because my brother was all about like the Blue Cats days. And like that's, so oh, he, and he special, gave me. Special days. He gave oh, me dude. They, Verona. Yeah. So Verona was the first local band CD I had, but the first one I went out and bought right. was Copper, for sure. Right. And we played with Copper a lot. There was, a, there was always. <laughs> I wasn't old enough to go. I couldn't. I was still like, <laughs> I was like 13, 14 around that time. I couldn't go to Blue Cats. You kidding me? I had to walk in. They'd be like, you probably could get <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> you just talk to the right people. They're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just there's a little back door there for a while. Like one of our friends would get kicked out every time we played, and he'd always get back in and be like, hey, I'm back. You know, it was like three <laughs> times he'd come back in. I also think my brother, he probably was like, no, you can't go, because he didn't want, you know, his 13 year old brother to be like, Woo! <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Well, he's going to find out now. That yeah, he is. He's going to hear this. No, he's not. And that was pre banana suit days. <laughs> yes. That, that was, yeah. Yes. That was, God, seven years before, wait. Like, yeah, about seven or eight years before I even started doing the basement and everything. I was wow. 21, 22 when I started doing that. Well, because Blue Cats raged and raged and raged for a while, and then it shut down, and he opened up the uh, Valerium after mm-hmm. that. And the Valerium went on for a little while, uh, or was it the Electric Ballroom, technically, until it was the Valerium, and then the Valerium got hot. Yeah. Like, kind of out of nowhere, and I was totally oblivious to, like, like – what was going on there and how much fun it was and like how many cool people were there and everything like that. And, and it was actually Darla that called me one time was like, you've got to come out and check this out. And I was like, I don't know. And I called our buddy Stam, Stam, if you're listening, everyone's ride or die, Eric Stam <laughs> out of the blue, I hadn't talked to him in a week. Stam, you want to go to the club? Said, sure. I'll be right there in 15 minutes. Just <laughs> ready to go, you know? And we went there and I remember it didn't really kick off to like midnight. Do you remember that? Yeah. And we got in and it was kind of okay. And there was like a DJ and I was like, I don't know. Is that, is that Colonel Bacchus? Or, you know, like it was, and I was like, okay. And we kind of hung around and I was like, well, I was like, I don't know, man. I think about maybe taking it off. And then midnight came and it just turned into like the nightmare before Christmas. You know, I mean, it was, <laughs> we were just like, what is going on here? And it I was, mean, the doors open. It was, this is Halloween, this, and people just poured in. It was like the Moulin Rouge. Yeah. 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 And we were just like, that's and, awesome. Yeah. And I was like, well, we're coming every week. Yeah. Yeah. And that does not exist anymore. Does not exist anymore. Anything like that? In and town, nothing right? like that. We every yeah. time I see anybody that was around at that time, they we just go, "Can you believe a that we made it out of that alive, <laughs> and b how and how crazy that was for just a few minutes? I mean, it was just nuts." Oh man, I miss I miss <laughs> some of those days. I, I really miss the Blue Cats days. Me too. I mean, that too. was like our it was our CBGBs in a way. That's, you know, <sighs> it was our kind of like local. It was place where all you know, all of it us was. played, you know, and and not only did, you know, all these bands play there, the bands that weren't playing there would come and like watch and hang out and support. I mean, it was it was an yeah. awesome scene. It for had a long to. Time. It was a scene. It, we we yeah. Knoxville literally, literally had a scene, and it was rad. And that was it was all centered around that club, and and you didn't have to like. Everybody just went. You yeah. just went like on a Friday. You just went there. Yeah. If you weren't playing, somebody cool would be, and everybody else would be there, and it was it was fantastic. MySpace was hot. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, that was. Wasn't you that told me that Thirty Seconds to Mars and Jared Leto showed up to Blue Cats and opened? They floor? played. They played it. That Blue blows Cats. my mind. Yeah. I think we played that show with them. You probably did. Yeah. Yeah. That just that's crazy. Yeah, because they they kicked us out of the merch area after. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah. Um, 
There's 30 seconds of Mars. We're going to need to uh, use this merch area. <laughs> so you, young gentlemen, get out. God. It sounds so much better on the internet when you read copper open for 30 seconds to Mars. Yeah, it doesn't mention just, the merch. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> the well, not right, the, the fine print. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, because we're kind of getting into that. Like, uh, give us some... Uh, uh, I don't know, some war stories from being out on the road. I mean, you've toured a ton now. Um, like, have you got any big, uh, like, monumental takeaways or even just, like, funny, Gosh. stupid stuff? Like, uh, I mean... I know that's kind of a loaded question. It's you know? tough. Well, yeah, but, I mean, it's tough to remember, like, you know, it's it's one of those things where, like, sometimes, like, if you're in a situation, something will, like, dawn on you that happened. But, like, you won't ever remember that thing, and you know, otherwise. But Right. So kind of like a flash, like a PTSD flashback. Kind of. Like it happens to you again, you're like, oh, my God. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's exactly how you can imagine. You know, you pull up in a van, unload your stuff, play the show, load it back, and then if you're going to, you know, we, we used to play West Virginia Bunch, Huntington and stuff. We'd drive to Huntington, Charleston. You know, it was like, all right, well, who's who's driving? Well, you drove last night, so I'll, you know, or, or whatever, you know. So it was like, so that person couldn't drink. Mm-hmm. So then there's always just like the three partiers and the one stiff <laughs> that had to be responsible. Um, you know, and then it's like whoever's driving, it's like, and even in, my, you know, the band after that, it's like someone would be driving at four in the morning and, you know, they'd be, you know, they'd turn around and look at everybody asleep, like in the benches of the van. And, and you're just like. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I have of this. You know, it's like that's sure. when those are the those are the times when you're like, why do I do this? Yep. But then when you know when you're, you know, crank open that you know crank up the amp Fuck and you yes. just man, you're just mm-hmm. like, this is why I'm fucking here. And this I, is again, why I'm doing this. You know, I've always seen that in you. I've never ever felt like you were phoning it in. I all I knew like that's one of the mo- you've always <clears> had this authenticity. Dude, it was always awesome, honest man. and like I think that's got to be. For guys that are out there touring, and there's a lot of guys that are out there touring all the time and in varying conditions. Sometimes they're in a cool bus. Sometimes they're in, like you described, a van. Sometimes yeah. it's a couple of cars following each other. I mean, whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, I, and I think that that's got to be what fuels you. you yeah. Know, especially in today's climate. I know that, that, that albums aren't selling like they used to. and it's, there's, Everything's different these days. But like you've, you, yeah. the people that are in it are in it to win it. You saw it the other night at the open for oh, yeah. yeah. Jesus, everybody, the hair on everybody's arm was standing up. You really slayed it. Oh, right? dude. I, I, was, I was super, super nervous. Like, I mean, because I, I, I don't usually, you know, I, I don't play those songs very often. And I, I hadn't played them on a, on a guitar really at all. I mean, the last time I played... Any of those, you know, songs off Allies was with um, my buddy Evan Stone and, yep. and Matt yep. from Ten Years, and and uh, you know they kind of did all the heavy lifting, and I just sat there and sang, and it was it was that you know it was nice. So this time I was like, all right, it's just me. I'm gonna have to uh, learn my own songs. <laughs> so, but I was just I was nervous, but um, man, I'm I'm glad it came across well. It translated uh, very well. They worked perfectly on it, and you, that Fleetwood Mac cover was. Dope. It was, and there so was dope, thank yeah. you. And there was literally one point during that cover where I leaned in and I was like, I feel like I should be clapping right now. And right as I said that, you went, Hey, can you start? And you pointed to some other guy in the crowd. He went, Start oh, yeah. clapping. Yeah, my friend. I was like, Yo, he, can you can you get him clapping? And he's like the he he's like the beard. loud guy that's usually just he's the one in between songs that's like woo like. And I'm like, Oh, he'll definitely do it. And and, and I'm like, Yo, man, let's get him clapping. And it was like. <laughs> like crickets, like whiff. I'm I like, come on, you dude. That over though, the the. Oh yeah, totally. I just yeah, totally. so I'm good. Like, all right, let's do it. Totally. Well, <laughs> and 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 um, something you don't know about Hunter, but Hunter's a really talented singer too. And thank you, sir. And cool, hope man. Maybe soon we'll have something recorded. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but, but we, we'll have something soon. But I remember you commented on like how Keith was singing and how he would move in and out of the mic and just like yeah, the natural your your mic I was like, control. This guy's a pro, dude. It, the, your mic control blew me away like everything else too but when you did the uh when you like crouched down and backed up and were like just belting the shit out of some stuff but you would come in a little bit yeah and then bring it back just the natural fade of so that screw the sound guy I we mix like, ourselves no i i was i was flattered like oh, it felt, felt like an back here? No, 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 no. I, I was sp- like i got good mic control and then you got up there and i was like fuck me like what is this he pulled out a notepad and was like crouch no, yeah. back up then forward for then real back. <laughs> Corey taylor is my favorite frontman singer of all time. I've seen him live before. That's a, he's a good one, and for sure. I, I'm, I, I promise I'm not being hyperbolic. I 
was not as transfixed by him as I was by your performance oh, man. that night. And I honestly don't know what it was. You had a badass hat on. The songs were killer and everything else. But just I might have just just jaw on the floor. And He's if an I assassin. had a notepad, Damn. He's an I, assassin, dude. I would have been taking notes for sure. He's an assassin. Ah, you guys are you guys are too nice. Um, I really the reality is I really just don't know what I'm doing. I'm I'm that's just, the secret. I I really don't. I'm just kind of like I just want to have fun and try to sing in key as best I can. I mean, um, you know, that's really what I'm. You know, and trying not to pee myself and everything else. <laughs> I don't know. No, nobody gets hurt. We all go home safe. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Okay. There, there were no bowel movements, unexpected bowel movements. So. Yeah, totally. It's totally always good. a plus. Yeah. Always a plus. Yep. That's when it's nice to have the band as a backup. Hey, do the instrumental. I'll be back in three minutes. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, I got something I saw on the news I wanted to talk to you guys about and see what you thought. So American Idol is back. I didn't know this. I thought it was dead. There's, well, there's a guy from Knoxville. Well, David Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's back. It's now Lionel Richie, Katy Perry, and Luke Bryan Okay. Mm-hmm. as the judges. So recently, Katy Perry's been under fire because during one of the, like one of the contestants doing their oh, song. Oh, she like kissed a guy or something? Like she leaned in. I don't know what transpired beforehand, but she, he came up to give her a key, kiss on the cheek. And when he leaned in to do that, she went and did like did the switcheroo on him, mm-hmm. the old switcheroo, and, and like you know, front faced him, kissed him on the lips, yeah. and like he was all like you know, oh, and he fell down and stuff, and everyone thought it was funny, and then all of a sudden he started bringing up the fact that oh, I've never been in a relationship before, I want, I've never kissed anybody, I wanted my first real kiss to be with someone important and special, and so like all these people started getting after her for like harassment oh, and all this other stuff, and I was like, bizarre. I don't yeah. know how to frame that in necessarily. There, um, I, I go back and forth, because honestly, the, the amount of power that she has over someone in that position, in his position, that part of it bugs me, because at that point, you know that you're safe, and the, the power dynamic, which has been brought up plenty, and we don't need to get too sociopolitical with it, yeah. but well, the power she dynamic also apologized reversed to him on the spot. Been, yeah, she she seemed yeah. to like not. Lionel like, as Richie soon as he made a big up, joke. He was like, he was, "Oh, really?" And so, well, here's the thing. It's weird. Just, How did the guy's audition go? I think it went well. He did got he kicked do, off. He, oh, did he? Did he blow yeah, it? He got three no's. <laughs> you know, like you see, oh, did he I suck? And saying. then he's mad at her because they it seemed like him. he wasn't mad though. Like it, it, what happened was he was interviewed. Yeah. About it, which is what you were just yeah, talking he, about, he and about he gave it. his side of things, and then with you know clickbait and twenty four hour news cycle, they took the juicy stuff and threw it up there and made it sound like, according to him, he like, said like something he didn't does, yeah. say. So you got your Facebook, you know, yeah, clickbait Ugh. news sites. I guess your you'd algorithms. Call God, everything yeah. is an algorithm. So how man. do you like American Idol, Keith? Uh, I can't say that I've watched too much of it. Um, I could not tell you who's won it other than, you know, Kelly, Kelly Clarkson. Clarkson. Sure. You know? This uh, is true for everyone. I think Dave Grohl had a really good kind of... Well, he he pointed out that, like, if, if some of our most iconic heroes, like Bob Dylan or somebody went on, or even himself... Oh, wow. Like, like, yeah. They wouldn't Never have made it past been. the first round. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What I love, he, wow. he said, he's like, he's like, I can't remember what... It wasn't making fun of American Idol, but he was like... This all should be taking place in a garage somewhere, yeah, not that, in yeah. front of millions of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, the real good stuff comes from inside of a garage. Well, he's or, advocated just like get a couple friends, get something, bang it out, just yeah. bang it out, bang it out, yeah, bang yeah. it out. Like, uh, you know, you, you eventually will get to that point where you sound like a band. I think, like, mm-hmm. I, I I totally appreciate that ideology. Oh yeah, know? yeah. Oh, nice little lull here. <laughs> Anybody got anything? <laughs> now, I will say, as the uh, the the eater of this group, the fat one, it's <laughs> it's up to my duty to ask you. Going on tour in different countries and things like that, yeah. what's the what's the best food that you've ever come across? Oh, or wait, I will add to that too. Or the Sketchiest food, yeah. That was like ever tried. Like if somebody tried to serve it backstage, and you were like, anybody oh. ever hand you a chopstick with like this, fried crickets on it? They're like, eat it. This is a this is a subject that I am um, pretty passionate about. <laughs> Actually, I have a funny story about this. So this we, is going to be good. We were doing you. this. Um, this was like back a few years ago um, when we were doing the press for uh, Dark Before Dawn. Breaking Benjamin was back. Like it's like you know the hiatus is over here. We're doing all this press, new album, new stuff, all this stuff. You know, we've got this video interview for YouTube. It's it's with Eddie Trunk. You know, he used to he, he hosted that metal show. Yep. Super nice guy. I love yep. that show. I I hate that it's gone. Um, 
But uh, you know, and, and you know, we're sitting there, all of the band, you know, all of the band members, and um, you know, he's asking us questions, asking asking Ben about stuff, and eventually it rolls around to me, and you're like, what about you know, what about you? Um, uh, actually, before I even get to me, he's like. Ben, what what do you you know what are you all about you know you know I'm all about you know writing music and you know just really making the best music I can you know and like really excited to come back with these guys and what about you Aaron Aaron's like you know I'm really happy to be here and just my 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 family is really important to me and and Jason uh, my, you know my family and Keith what about you uh, I like to eat <laughs> <laughs> and I just I just froze it was like that's why I hate those kind of things like i'm just like so you say the wrong thing and 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 he was like whoa you like the you're like the skinniest guy blah 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 and you, you know Isn't anyway sean what about you and i wanted to be like but i mean i like other stuff too <laughs> you know but the the moment has passed and so yeah so that was a joke for a while like i'm keith i like to eat i was just about it. to say for mentioning that the first thing that came to mind was the zombie kid when she was like so you're dressed up as a zombie do you like halloween like what's your favorite candy and he's like i like turtles <laughs> and she was like okay and then he just kind of like and then walked away like yeah. looked back and forth and that's exactly the that's first awesome. thing that came to my yeah. mind that that was uh that was that was it. That was my grand introduction. So when you're when like you're out on the road or you're over, you know, overseas. Yeah, sorry. Oh no, you're yeah. good. <laughs> What's like the one place you're like, oh, we're going there. I am so just going nuts. Oh, I'm gonna get up on stage and just be like, yeah, let's do this. You know, this is uh, it's a chain. It's not something too fancy, but uh, man, there's just something about this place called On the Border. Okay. And it's just incredible. It's good. It, they just have this incredible queso, and you just want to order a vat of it and just dive in and swim around. Bathe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people would look at me and go, I bet you do bathe in queso. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surely you've heard this one. No, I- <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know. Well, I know you got to be careful. Like, I've heard guys that are out on the road, and they'll talk like, you've got to watch it. Because if you get sick, like, I mean, you know, you've got to, you've got to, like, be all oh, yeah. you gotta turn on every single night. Yeah. And the fans don't know. You know, they've been they've had that ticket for six months. They're like, they're like no pressure. But like they're, you know, they're like they they took a whole week off like to just get this one thing. And like and the, if you've had three bad nights in a row, like you've got to somehow deliver something to them. So you, you don't want to take a lot of risks out on the road, I think, probably. Yeah, I mean plus it's just kind of like uh uh you know, we you, you eat a lot of the time just out of just like, man, I've got this quick moment to kind of eat something and just, you know, or, hey, we're in the middle of somewhere, Texas. The only thing they have is, you know, Whataburger or something, although Whataburger is delicious. That's a, I like actually, that's yeah. actually pretty. When I lived in Florida, that was my drunk food. If, I was, <laughs> yeah. if it was 2 o'clock in the morning because there are 24 hours, I'd leave the bar, walk across the street to Whataburger, and then on my way home, eat Whataburger. Yeah, like walking home. Yeah, because under palm was walking, trees, everything was walking distance, and I would just go down ninety eight. Which now that I tell people that, they're like, "You walk down ninety eight? I'm like, "Yeah, why? Why not?" And they're like, the "Most pedestrian accidents happen on that highway." You're like, "I was drunk. I had burgers, and I would, I would just, I would have like two or three burgers and just open the like, just reach in the bag and pull one out as I walk home because it was about a 15, 20 minute walk. Shit, I would have walked. By the time I got home, I was sober, full, and sleepy. It was perfect. <laughs> wow, he had that all worked out. Wow. <laughs> Testament to the timing. All right. So you guys are gonna you guys are gearing up for a new tour soon. When is do we know when that is? Yeah, <clears throat> it's uh it's coming up here at the uh, end of April. Um, we're uh, doing some headlining shows with uh, our boys in ten years, and uh, it's kind of just um, connecting the the, the festivals awesome. uh, that we got coming up for the spring. So should be good. And then we have a, a, another couple months off, and then it's a, a summer tour with Five Finger Death Punch and. Nothing more and uh, right. nice bad wolves, I believe that's what they're called. Super rad. So, so man, it's going to be Copper Reunion, and then just very quickly after that, boom, start yep. touring again. Man, if you guys are listening out there, um, and and hopefully we've got, we're starting to get some listeners outside of just the the Knox Metro area. Like, if you guys get a chance to check these guys out on tour, do not pass on it. Go check it out, and if you get to see them with ten years, double bonus. That's that's Knoxville royalty right there all mm-hmm. night. So. Please go check that out. If you live in Knoxville, go see the Copper Reunion. Come out and hang out with Keith. Fucking come to the show. Don't sit on your ass for this one. Come to the fucking Copper Reunion. I'll fight I'm you. I'm paying him to say all this, by the way. Yeah. 
<laughs> Are we done? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get everything? I read everything you wrote, Mr. Wallen. Well, and we talked a little bit. Of, somebody listening to this remembers the Blue Cats days. I know you do. I know you're out there. I know I can imagine five or six of the people right now, key players. And this is going to be like a Blue Cats reunion. Think about it. It's going to happen. So be I'm, there. I'm pretty sure somebody out there, once they heard Blue Cats pause this podcast and just went, ah, like just remembering it. <laughs> Went and just bought like, like a dozen tickets. They're just super excited. <laughs> You know, being all nostalgic. That's that's a big one. So yeah, man, don't don't snooze on this. Come out, check it out. Check out Breaking Benjamin on the road. Go check out Keith Wall and Soul album Allies. I cannot endorse that enough. What am I missing? You guys got other stuff going? Um, well, the new the new Breaking Benjamin album. Uh, we mentioned that at big, the beginning, but yeah, that's coming out news. April thirteenth. Yep. Yep. Big news. Already right a video on, Already a video out from it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right around the corner. Oh man. Three songs out. They're super kick ass. This is, you know, Breaking Benjamin evolved big time old sound that you want but all kinds of new shit going on then it's all good so it bodes nothing but well for the the album so get in there and do it if Buy you it. don't know this hunter's already got three pre-ordered <laughs> one to keep in the wrapper one to use and then one for other people that want to be able to listen really? to it as well yeah <laughs> that's sick man <laughs> yeah dude thank you oh god <laughs> they have to be the cd i'm, I'm too old-fashioned when, oh, I went, when i went to go right. a pre-order i was like seven bucks what fine and then i saw it and i was like Oh, that's a di- I don't want the digital. Give me a CD, damn it. You want the real thing? Yeah. yeah. He wants to hold that's, it. I want to be able to struggle to find something to, you know, play it on and then the journey's all worth it. That's now, are you guys doing are you guys doing vinyl too? Is there yes. going to be a vinyl version of it? Got yes, it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, we did for the last album, so do you, I uh I think so. How how well did those do cuz I know vinyl took off recently, but it, with with actual CDs seeming to go down, artists are saying digital albums sell fairly well, but vinyl seems to be popular, but, well, regardless of if it's a vinyl, CD, or digital, get a copy of the album now. Yeah, Just dude. do it, and then go see them kick ass live. Yeah, man, whatever your medium is, like, like do us here at the Beacon House <laughs> Podcast a favor, and go and buy this album, buy all those albums, buy the concert tickets, do it. Everybody listening to this knows, um, and whoever knows me has heard me talk about this ad nauseum, but if you don't buy music, if you don't support music, music will go away, and we don't ever want to see that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, true. I know it's so fun to have conveniences and have choices, and I like it too and everything, but we really got to think about it. Um, it still matters if you buy the album. It still matters if you show up at the show, and and I would add to that if you like stand there and put your arm up and cheer and you know what I mean? Like be part yeah. of the process. Like it's a mm-hmm. music's a real, real important thing. And, and everybody sitting here absolutely knows that. And hopefully everybody listening knows that. So that's my little speech about it, but go buy some stuff. I will say red cold river. <clears throat> I have noticed one thing about music videos nowadays and red cold river was nothing short of just like a short film with, you know, music all the whole way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Like I Thanks. just love that music videos are doing that now. They, they're taking, well, I guess they've always been like that, but I just remember back in like you know, you know Green Day and things like that, where it was something small and then a lot of the band. But it seems like yeah. now you know musicians are wanting to like tell their story in a visual way as well as their you know musical way, and so it seems like there's a lot less of like the band shots and a lot more of these like stories, little short stories going on. And I I really just very like cinematic quality to them, and I love it. Totally. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, we we have. Uh... Some really talented people that that uh, worked on those uh, videos with us, and um, really, it's it's uh, a, a lot of that stuff is um, from Ben. You know, he he thinks up some of that some of that cool stuff, and just you know, we're just lucky enough to kind of be a part of it and see that kind of stuff. You know, the the end result when it's done, we're like, oh wow, okay, cool. You know, but uh, yeah, we were uh, that was like in a day off in the. I think it wasn't too cold yet, but we were sitting in a you know a cold ass river all day. So that was that was an interesting day for sure. <laughs> I was the splash guy. They're like, "Yo, you're the splash dude, so keep splashing." I'm like, "Sweet." <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I'm just gonna kick a lot yeah. away from me. Yeah, everybody else is dry as fuck. <laughs> I'm like, cool. <laughs> Do you hear it? Right. See, you see what these guys go through. Don't sit at home, okay? Go participate. They you, worked. You, they are working for your allegiance. <laughs> and you also, you heard it here first. Keith Wallen, splash guy. Splash guy. Yes. That's, that's right. And I like to eat. Yes. <laughs> so, do, so do I. It shows yes. more for me though. All right. I love oh, it. Goodness. Well, guys, we don't want to take up too much of Keith's time. Again, man, thank you so much for coming on. I feel like we could dude, do about 20 more of these. Dude, I, um, this has been so fun. I can't thank you guys enough for having me, man. Dude, it's, what a guy. It's our pleasure Absolutely. all the way. It's Absolutely. been an honor. And by the way, I have guest number one. 
Guest number one. Guest yes. number one. I'm honored. Yeah, yeah. Number Holy one. Holy shit. Guest number one. It's all downhill from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please go check out Allies. Like, again, we said everything. Um, and we just want to thank Keith for being here, man, and for doing what you do also. Yeah. Just for being who you are, doing what you do. It means a lot to a lot of people. Um, man, we're just honored to have you here. And uh, that said, you guys got anything else? Uh, where can they? Where can people find you, like, on Twitter? Where, where can they follow you at? Uh, I'm at KJ Wallen on okay. Twitter, Instagram. Nice. And then on YouTube, just Keith Wallen. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So you got your homework. Go go hit those digits. And, get, and where can they find us, Casey? They can find us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Beacon House Knox. And then on YouTube is just the Beacon House Podcast and Facebook at Beacon House Podcast. That's right. And if it wouldn't bother you too much, leave us a review, you know, whatever. Maybe I hear that helps some reason. I don't know, whatever. I, I, I think it does. <laughs> it certainly helps our self-esteem when it's not a terrible review. <laughs> yes, it does. Hint, hint. All oh right. My goodness. Well, okay. Well, then signing off. I'm Spencer. I'm Hunter. I'm Casey, and I love you. Oh my.